Well, right now could be considered a critical time period as we try to get this crop across the U.S. off to a strong start. And one would argue we've done that in many areas, but there are still some issues that exist out there across parts of the country. And what does that outlook look like for the month of June? We're going to talk about that here as we take a look at weather. Joining us for our weekly weather update, Eric Stodgrass with Nutrient Ag Solutions. And Eric, Good to have you back on with us here this week. And this is something you and I have been talking about for quite some time now, and you've been talking about it here really since uh, late last year and, and much of this part of the year. We've been watching to see, are we going to have widespread drought issues as we get into this mid-June time frame? So I'll, I'll ask you, what are things looking like right now as we set this up? Is it going to be widespread or is it more of a regional type of risk? Yeah. So, I mean, if, if you just go back through the last several months and if anybody that's watching today heard me speak over the winter, um, you know, this was the narrative. We saw falls drought sucking all the soil moisture out. We had a snowfall problem in the northern plains over the over the winter. We then got into a spring pattern, which was dry across parts of uh, Nebraska, Iowa, northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin. What was missed was incredibly wet conditions in the southern plains and in the mid-south. Well, not the mid-south. We, we nailed the mid-south having a stormy and active spring. Um, but, you know, you look back at that and you say, well, Eric, what was the narrative? Well, the narrative was post La Nina, low momentum stayed in the atmosphere soil moisture deficits well of course we're going to talk about there being drought when in winter and spring and if you don't remember like go back to march and early april we, we were watching dust storms coming out of the southern plains that made it to canada okay what i told you and what i told everyone else is that the call needs to be made mid to late june like where are we going and these next 10 days are going to be critical a ridge is going to try to move into the central united states summer ridges do that they're very very common it's their longevity that we care about. So if they stick around, you get storms that run their periphery and nothing on the inside. If they're transient, then the pattern stays open and moving and we tend to have a much better chance at getting some moisture. All right, so where, where are we? It's now for the next 10 days that we have to see if the atmosphere is gonna be capable of using all that moisture that's down there across the Southern tier of the United States where they had more severe weather over the weekend. We had it in the southeast. We had it in the southern plains. We see the forecast stays wet in the cotton. I mean, the cotton belt, 6% of the cotton belt's in drought right now. How often do you get to say a single digit number in front of cotton belt drought? Well, that's what it is. So we're sitting here going, all right, if, if, if this area is dry, can we get dry north of it? Which is where the, the corn belt is. And we often talk about corn belt weather in this, in this uh, broadcast. If the thunderstorms are capable of breaking through that into parts of Nebraska, Iowa, northern Missouri, northern Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and we see that, then you have to take the drought risk talk down even another notch. And I know we still have July and August to go, but it's one of those things where you're going to be kicking the can down the road because you're going to have soil moisture and there's still a deficit along that I-80 corridor. But the overall narrative continues to be one of a drought reduction situation than a drought risk. Now, I know that all the long range models still plant dryness in the central United States and heat in the central U.S., all the way back to Montana. But we have to call that into question when you see the spring pattern doing this. So that's kind of where we sit right now, Jesse. Well, I know my travels last week, I kind of went up through some of that area you just mentioned, that deficit in the I-80 corridor. You know, I got through Illinois, southern, ha southern half of Illinois, and then up into Missouri, central Iowa, north central Iowa, et cetera. And the crops that I saw that have popped out of the ground, I mean, they look like they've gotten a good start, yeah, but Eric, as, as we know, uh, that that could change very quickly unless we continue to see good, favorable weather, heat, timely rains, etc. Yeah, they're going to get the heat. They're going to break out into the 90s in that corridor later this week into the weekend. But a few days of 90s in June, crop's going to eat every bit of that. I mean, it, it's, it needs these heat units, and we really need these heat units farther to the east. I mean, the northeast United States back into Pennsylvania, Ohio, they're way behind on the accumulation of heat units. They've got to get it. So there's no, we're, we're going to love seeing some heat. It's just this question. Is that dryness that could sit under that ridge, does it does it actually last? Now, if you would have, if we'd have done this broadcast on Friday and I brought up all those maps, you'd have seen a big hole, Nebraska, Iowa, northern Missouri, Illinois, southern Wisconsin, southern Indiana, parts of South Dakota, just a hole. 
And then the weekend transition in the forecast model said, no, nah, we think it's going to storm through there. Now, we know meteorologically that that's always a possibility. When the ridge builds, follow the 588 line. That's your storm. That's your ridge riding corridor. And we saw it, but the models didn't pick up on it. Now they are. And, and that, that's, that's, that's the thing. So again, I'm just going to say this. When we talk two weeks from now, okay, that, that one, that's that, that'll be our first discussion after the solstice. Mm -hmm. If that hole didn't fill in and these models were too wet, then there's a whole other narrative. And that I-80 corridor, which looks very good right now, we, we could make an argument that even though there's risk there, that that's a garden spot, okay? Um, that corridor, and it's a garden spot because they they're the they got off to the best start, right? They they southern, gosh, the Delta, the Tennessee Valley, the Ohio Valley, the red, white, and Arkansas, uh, you know, valleys down there. No, no, no. Too much rain, too much severe weather, repeated chances at replanting, no good opportunities to get any field work done, nor early spraying. Then the eastern corn belt was way too cold. We had major flooding in the central and western parts of the Dakotas. Uh, but you, you find this quarter in between that's been a little dry, but they got in early and they've not had any frost issues They you know, they've been able to, they've been able to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there are vulnerable corridor. That's that, that I 80 corridor. And here's what it's going to do. It is either going to be spectacular or problematic. And I think these next 10 days will establish whether or not that's going to be the case. If you made me draw a line in the sand and tell you what I think it's going to do, history would tell me to tell you spectacular that it, that it will storm. Because only four times since 1980 has that corridor along I-80 been smacked with like epic summer drought conditions. Mm -hmm. So probable, probabilistically, if I can get the word out, you know, I, I think that the chances are ridge riding storms are higher. So if they get ridge riders, build up some more soil moisture, and the crop continues to mature, then we we kick the can down the road on risk. Now, there's still a big, long road to kick that can down. It's called July and August. Yep. But my goodness, right now, I just I would just tell you that these next 10 days will tell me if the setup for July is one where I better start throwing out the, you know, the, the major risk packages that could happen. Or if I'm like, eh, it's not that vulnerable. So that's it. That's the story right now, Jesse. Eric, always appreciate the thoughts and the insight. Anything else you're tracking this week yeah. here in terms of the weather? We are. We're still watching those ocean temperatures. So again, if, if we're going to have problems, we got to get colder in the Gulf of Alaska. It's not really that cold just yet. It's still cold off the West Coast, but there's a pair of East Pacific uh, tropical storms that just came out. They're not going to get into the Southwest United States like Alvin did, but they're they're down there. And I think, you know, we're also going to be having to have a discussion. Not not. I don't think it's coming up in the next few weeks, but we always have a summer tropical system, right? That tries to get into the Gulf before we get into the late summer, fall active time mm -hmm. period. So those wild cards are always on the table as well. But I'm telling you, watch for the thunderstorm activity in the next 10 days. That will be the test on whether or not there's going to be a real problem. One last thing, Jesse, the new long range forecast models that just came out, um, ECMWF, mm -hmm. it still plants for July, August, September, major drought in the central U.S. Canadian prairie and over in Black Sea. It's wet North China Plain, wet India, wet Indonesia, wet Southern Australia. But it's got these two epicenters of dryness that seem to be planted across these key growing areas. And all of us are going, okay, ECMWF, you have been saying this for months. And is it really going to happen? Because you could make an argument that the ECMWF did not do a good job on that Southern Plains severe it did the best of all of them but it was still not a good job on picking up on the southern plain storms which again just raged last night in that same region so i've got big questions for it and really it's always a situation every single summer of looking at it from a macro scale but realizing it's the micro scale that determines the success of the crop so that's what we have to do a lot to keep our eyes on. Folks can stay with everything. Agweather.com, ag-wx.com for more. Eric Stodgrass, Nutrient Ag Solutions. Thanks for joining us this week, my friend. Have a good one. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Sounds good.